Hey there, and welcome back to the Ingrain Workshop. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be doing a trim project. As most of you know, if you watched last week's video, we were on vacation up in the Smoky Mountains. While we were gone, our shop dog, Dixie, um, stayed back here, and we had our neighbor house sit for her. But during the 4th of July, all the fireworks, she's a high anxiety dog. She did a lot of damage inside our laundry room. So today, we're going to fix those problems. So let's get started. Dixie the shop dog, the guilty party, had a little 4th of July party inside our laundry room. And that's the result of the 4th of July party. This is the door that, uh, the pocket door that goes into my office from the laundry room. As you can see, the, the paint is scratched off the door, but the door isn't damaged. But the frame on the left side of the door is damaged and I'm gonna have to replace that. She also had a party with the door that goes into our kitchen. And as you can see, this is also a pocket door and it's also been damaged on the left side of the trim. Um, also the interior piece of trim on this door um, was also damaged down here at the bottom. I'll try to zoom in. You can kind of see there. So the, the actual trim, door trim, and the interior piece of the door trim has both been destroyed and will have to be replaced all as a result of the 4th of July party that Dixie had in our laundry room. And then there's one other piece. This is the door that leads to the outside from our laundry room. And she also had a little party on this trim as well. So again, this is the left trim piece on the door, which we'll be replacing now. Okay, so we're getting ready to cut the new trim piece for the, uh, the door that leads from the laundry room to the kitchen. The first thing we want to do is cut the 45 because that's an easy cut. We don't need to take any measurements. We can just line the board up on the miter saw and cut the 45 degree angle. So let's do that now. These trim pieces are, I believe, seven feet in length. So when I go to make the, the 45 cut here on the end of the board, I'm just trying to make the cut as close to the end of the board as possible because it's not going to leave me a lot of room on the other end of the board uh, to make the uh, finished cut. Okay, now that we have the angle cut piece on the trim, um, we can take now and cut the 90 degree end on the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the old piece as a template so we can mark out where to cut our 90 degree angle at the bottom of the trim. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the 45 from our old piece to the 45 on our new piece. And as you can see now, both pieces, the old and new, are lined up. So now that we have this end of the, the trim piece lined up, we can go down to the other end and we can mark where we're going to make the 90 degree cut. So now we're just going to repeat this process for all the other trim pieces. And you'll see here, this is the trim piece for the interior piece of the pocket door uh, from the kitchen. And that's just a straight 90 degree cut on both ends. Mm. And just like that, we have all the trim pieces cut uh, for all three door openings. And we didn't use a tape measure at all. We just used the existing trim pieces as templates for the new trim pieces. So now let's go get them installed. Okay, so we've dry fitted the, uh, the first piece here at the back door. And everything seems to fit. Um, so now we're just going to get it lined up in place and use a pneumatic air gun and shoot some finishing nails in it to fasten it. Here I'm just using my pneumatic air gun along with a pancake air compressor and I'm just going to go down and nail the trim as close to the edge as possible. That way it's fastened uh, directly to the wood casing that uh, is inside the door. Real quick. All right, now that we have the trim piece nailed in place, we're now going to go back and caulk both the uh, front of the trim and the back of the trim. And then we'll also caulk over all the nail holes. 
So I'm just going to take and run a bead of caulk here at the inside of the uh, new trim piece that I installed and this is going to seal uh, the joint between the trim and then the wood casing of the door and when I'm caulking I always like to use a, uh, a damp rag or have a damp rag handy because once I apply the bead of caulk I usually take my finger um, and, and dampen it with the uh, rag and remove the excess caulk um, it just it just makes for a cleaner finish um, and then I'm going to take and caulk the uh, the baseboard here at the trim and then the outside piece of the trim where it comes in contact with the uh, drywall again I'm just going to run a bead of caulk all the way down and then I'm just going to use my finger uh, dampened and uh, remove the excess caulk uh, a lot of times what I'll do too is once I grab that excess caulk I'll either clean it with the uh, with the damp rag, or I'll use that excess cost to go caulk to go back and fill in all the uh, the nail holes. Now that this trim piece is complete, we'll start the installation of the trim piece around the office door, and we'll do it the same way, just by using the uh, pneumatic air gun and going down and shooting the trim piece into the actual uh, interior casing of the uh, pocket door. Um, and then we'll go back and caulk it. Okay, so when you're when you're using a pneumatic uh, finish nailer, uh, because of the shape of the nails, um, if you hold the nail gun like this and you're shooting close to the edge of the trim, there's a chance that when the nail goes in, it's going to penetrate and turn and twist either to the right or the left. Uh, the last thing you want to do is nail and have your nail come out the side piece of your uh, door trim here. So that's why you see me turning the, the gun vertical and shooting uh, the nails in vertically. That way, if they go to the left or the right, it doesn't matter. They're still penetrated into the wood and they're not gonna show or damage the wood. So that's just a pro tip. Always uh, keep your gun in the vertical position instead of the horizontal when you're, when you're nailing to the, close to the edge of trim. This is our last door opening from the kitchen to the laundry room and you can see here I'm putting the inside piece of trim up first. This trim was just cut at a 90 degree angle at both ends and then I'm actually going back now and installing the face trim uh, which was the trim piece that we cut at a 90 degree angle at one end and a 45 degree at the other and I'm doing it the same way as I did the other two door openings uh, just using the pneumatic nailer to fasten the trim to the actual door casing and then I'm going to go back here and caulk everything up and then everything should be done and ready for paint. With the caulking complete I can start uh, preparing to paint so I'm just going to take some blue painters tape and just tape off the side of the trim that's next to the drywall that way I can trim that out nice and clean um, and then I think I'm using a white uh, latex uh, paint uh, semi-gloss uh, so you know it's easy to clean so if for whatever reason Dixie sticks her paws on the door frame and gets it dirty we can easily come back and and clean it and wipe it off
Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope this video helps you out in your project. If it did, please leave it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. I'll leave a link in the video description below to all the equipment and tools that I used in this video. I'll also leave a link to our Instagram account and our Etsy store. I'm Rick with the Ingrain Workshop. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.